The Scriptures Testify of Me One day, Jesus went out to speak about the Scriptures, and many people followed Him. As they followed Him around, they also received bread from Him. As a result, people even thought it would be good if they could make Him their king. Some followed Him around with the intention of taking Him and making Him their king. At that time, Jesus said, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. What is meant by the food which perishes? Freshly baked bread, fresh milk, all the foods we eat will someday decay and disappear, as will our flesh. Jesus was saying that we are not to live only for the sake of such food, the food we eat to survive. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. The one who gives the food which endures to everlasting life is Jesus, the Son of God, and this is what he has promised us. The people who heard these words from Jesus at that time thought they had to throw themselves into doing the work of God. So they asked Jesus again. Then they said to him, What shall we do, that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. There will be many people who have believed in Jesus in one way or another as they live their lives in this world. Generally, everyone who attends church and listens to sermons thinks this is what it is to believe in Jesus. Yet, in this verse, the notion of eternal life is also included in the word believe. A person who does not have assurance of eternal life is not qualified to live in the eternal heaven. It is very dangerous to fall into the absurd kind of faith that believes God will accept you after you die because you have attended church regularly. This kind of superstition has been created by many leaders in the religious world. It is truly reckless to think that God will overlook your mistakes after you die even though it has not happened during your lifetime. You are living in the flesh now, but the moment your spirit departs, you will be in the hands of God. Then, if you have ignored the word of God, no one will be able to help you. The Bible itself tells us why we should read it. Jesus said, But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent Him you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me, that you may have life. In other words, there was no room for God's word to abide in their spirits. This is because they did not believe God, who sent his son Jesus. Here in verse 39, we have the aim in reading the Bible. We think we read the Bible to receive eternal life, and yet the scriptures testify of Jesus. The Bible was recorded to tell of Jesus, the real truth, and the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is to receive this eternal life that we read the Bible. It is only when we are given this eternal life that we are able to go to the eternal place and live there forever. People often think that even though their lives in this world are difficult to bear, after they die, they will go to heaven and live comfortably there. They may entertain these idle fancies, but the Bible is definitely not vague like that. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, a religious leader of the Jews, he said very clearly, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
This is the fundamental truth of Christianity. And it is what makes it different from any religion. All religions, including Christianity, when it exists merely as an empty shell, are ignorant of this absolute truth. Even the religion known as Christianity is no different from any other religion if it is oblivious of this fundamental truth. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Any Christian denomination is meaningless without this truth that is revealed. What use is religion if eternal life is not poured out into the hearts of the believers? If their efforts and hard work come to nothing in the end, they are in a truly wretched situation. Suppose they work as hard as they can, but then they find they cannot enter the kingdom of God. It is vitally important to remember that we have been born in order to receive eternal life. Eternal life has the power to enable us to see the kingdom of God in our hearts. Certain Pharisees came to Jesus and asked him when the kingdom of God would come. Jesus replied, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here, or see there, for indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. He said, The kingdom of God is within you. But you need to be born again to be able to see this kingdom. Being born again is receiving eternal life, and a person must receive eternal life to be able to live forever in the eternal kingdom. This is God's promise.